Good afternoon, everyone. Central European drought revealing what's called hunger stones. You're seeing this across the media now. So what does it really mean to you? As you can see, even the lowest levels are still higher than what's bone dry at the very bottom of the stone. This is what it looked like before it was excavated. I dug out a PDF from the Hungarian library. That report goes into these river basins. When the most epic droughts were during that time, 1616, just a moderate drought through history. They found the biggest droughts were 1778 to 1784. You can map this back over the last 400 years, but the report itself maps back 1,000 years of drought as well as the crop losses that ensued thereafter. Did you see about all these well below normal temperatures across the United States in the news? I bet you didn't. And with these droughts upon us, you are absolutely going to need to start to grow some of your own food. The Adapt 2030 Truly iTunes Market.com link is in the description box below, as well as the links to tonight's stories and images. And I know you're going to want to check out that full PDF. And while you're doing that, make sure you click on Mini Ice Age Conversations, iTunes, Libsyn. Newest episode number 94, what's going to happen when your reality shatters or those around you? Let's talk about the Central European Hunger Stones. This is the Elbe River. Now, this stone through time has been chiseled when it gets to extreme low drought levels in the river. And the inscription reads, when you see me, cry. Because when this goes below certain levels, crops were wiped out for years at a time. You have to realize back in the modern minimum, they didn't have such a delivery system globally as we do today. It was more local production, local consumption at that time. Let's take a look at some of the numbers. 1616 points out on the right side. 1842, 1921. But do you notice anything peculiar about this stone? The level we're at today is below everything on this stone. It's bone dry sand below the stone. Even at the lowest marks in the most horrific droughts, we're eclipsing that right now. So I thought to myself, all right, where is this stone? How long has it been around there? Czech Republic, Elbe River. So I started looking around through the Czech Republic and I just did a DuckDuckGo search about hunger stones historical. And I kind of started with that as my search and right away a PDF came up. Droughts in the Czech lands, 1090 AD up to 2012. Oh my, was this a shocker to read. I, I spent more than an hour in this small PDF. The rivers that are running through the Czech lands, at least at that time, you have to realize governments have changed, borders have changed. But this is what the image looked like that was referenced in the PDF. Now notice the woman's dress on the right. This is far long ago when this image was taken, but it was cataloged and put into this PDF in 1995. They even highlighted in white where the height of the water was during some of the major droughts. And you'll see this goes back to the 1860s, 1840s. 1811, 1790, 1616, and it's all about the low water levels, and we're way below that right now. So let's look back into the report and see what the droughts were like in Central Europe so we can forecast out exactly what's going to happen right now based on the last thousand years of records. More drought is on the way, and this is going to be a significant drought that's going to reduce crop production across Europe. That's my own opinion, but after you see this information, you may very well agree with the conclusion. This is the Drought Severity Index, but this only takes us back to 1805. Now, the darker the bars are that you see there, the more intense the drought was from April to September. And when we get into the 2001 era, you can start to see some of the same intensity through time. 2001, 1941, 1841, 1831. That 1841 matches up with the 1840 that's on the rock. Okay, so that was an intense drought, crop losses at the time, but nothing because we had global delivery and water is being pumped as well. We have different delivery systems for our water that they just didn't have in the 1600s. But taking a look at the significant droughts marked on that stone, when we drop back into the 1616 era, it's only approximately minus 30 in the intensity. It's really not that intense overall compared to what you're seeing in the 1700s. Reading the report that most intense droughts were the 1500s and the 1700s. 
I'll let you stop and freeze any of these frames here. Also, the link's below in the description box in case you want to go to the direct PDF yourself. You can download it to have all these charts to take a look at. What was noticeable in this, they're always talking about the decadal frequency because these droughts seem to become in three to five year spurts, if you will. It's not one year of bad drought and then nothing. It seems to be coupled in threes and fives. So three years, five years seems to be a set within these decadal frequencies. Now this is going to take us from 1500 up to 2010, which they don't have the information for yet, but you can see it's in an extreme drought. So it's going to fit somewhere on this chart here. I'll take you a look at what's in the stones. You know, we saw those 1800 dates and that does match with the above chart there. We can see some through the 1800s, mid 1900s, 1921 or so. And then we go back into the 1600s That 1616 era does stick out. But once we get past that 1616 era, a little bit of water, and then suddenly it has that multi-decade drought. This is right in the Maunder minimum. Intensification at 1640 was the official mark for the Maunder minimum to onset. This is in term the little ice age as well. So if we're going back into a grand solar minimum right now, you would expect that we're going to repeat something and start to see significant droughts in these areas just as they did with the repeating 400 year cycle in our sun maunder minimum seems to be on par also droughts after 1500 AD this is the same report droughts to the checklands last thousand years of time they walk you through the different dates of drought and it seems the most significant dates were 1778 to 1784 now that was coming out of the maunder minimum and the significant dates of mid modern minimum, 1704 to 1708. Also, they've dissected the dry months here, which is really a good indication. They went all the way through the year, January to December, by the year going back. And there's even another two sets above this that take us back to 1000 AD. Now, since the water levels are lower than anything that has been at least since 1616, we can use that as a good benchmark, some of the lowest readings through this, and then take a look where we are today and just follow it out. Especially that 1780 era, you see how much drought was just year after year in different months going forward for five to eight years during that period. That's the lower bottom right where it says 1780. Notice the, the bunching of drought months. Also above that, you'll see it at 1680. But what you notice also, if you see that 1616 date on the stone and you go to the above chart, it's that long brown line right there. But then after the rainfalls returned, yet this time we are at a far more significant drought than that. Looking something in that 1780, 1774 to 1780 era is what I believe we're into right now. Significant drought across Europe. Entering into the grand solar minimum, crops lost, significant yield declines. We're seeing the lowest output in Germany in 40 years, lowest output in France in over 15 years, UK down, lowest output in 40 years, Ukraine down, Euro Mountains down, Russia down. And somehow the media just keeps saying that everything's fine with the wheat production, but they never dissect the wheat production into the type of wheat. You got the hard red winter, you got the soft, and then you got the junk animal food, but they seem to lump it all together. Terrible quality relegated to animal food. Wheat is not the same as hard red winter wheat that we use to bake breads and make pastas. They never dissect the types of wheat. So you can really see where the good quality stuff that we eat as humans comparatively to what the animals are eating. They lump it all together and say wheat's fine. You should do more research and really see what's happening with the premium per bushels on the hard red. And also another thing you're not going to see in the media. Did you see these epic snowfalls all through the central part of the United States out there west in the Rockies? I bet you didn't. This is a week ago. More cold on the way. You see, I thought significant snowfalls in August in Canada and the United States over a foot would have made news because, well, it's August and it's snowing. And then you always get the response, well, it can snow anytime up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Al Gore told us they'd never see snow again. Please realize this is in Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Do the math. It's 20 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than normal temperatures in those purple areas. Thanks for watching. Everything's linked below. Good luck on your research on the droughts. The patterns are here. Food prices up. Heavy tolls on our crops right now. And episode 94 on Mini Ice Age Conversations talks about that same thing when people's realities are going to be shattered once they realize the truth of what's going on with the climate debate.
And the reasons for food pricing and how people are going to react to this type of news when it starts to become daily front page articles.